Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has looked upon the days and the nights and he has favored some over others. And these days and nights become symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says to us, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ He says to the Prophet وسلم, remind them of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَذْبٍ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فِإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Therefore, whosoever venerates the symbols of Allah, that is from the fear of Allah in the hearts. And one of these symbols is the blessed month of Ramadan, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has looked upon and has made into a pillar of this religion. And any edifice that is based on pillars relies on the strength of those pillars to remain. And if one of those pillars gives way, then the entire edifice collapses. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has looked upon Ramadan and He has made it one of these five uh, memorial, uh, uh, time-honored pillars of this religion that will last until the end of time. Now, Ramadan is not for the sake of Ramadan. We don't fast these days, we don't, we don't stand in these nights just for the sake of these days and nights that are constricted in the month. The fact that it's a pillar means that it remains with us throughout the rest of the year. And the Prophet ﷺ put us on that trajectory when his teaching Ramadan, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, and follows it up from, from Shawwal with six days. It is as though he has fasted the entire year. And so this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards every good deed tenfold. And the reward of 30 days of fasting is 300. And the reward of six days, and he said six and not seven, you would have expected seven because seven is that number of perfection, it's that number of, of completion. But he said six because six times ten is sixty. And so you have 360, right, which covers the lunar year. And so this is, the, this is the, the benevolence of our Lord, is that He rewards us as though we had fasted the entire year. And in the Maliki Madhab, you have the entire year to do it, which is very comforting for our women especially, who have days to make up, and they don't need to make all of their days of Ramadan plus the six of Shawwal in Shawwal. Beginning from Shawwal, they have the rest of the year uh, and this is the opinion of Imam Malik. But the other Madahib say that they, they need, we need to fast these six days in Shawwal. So when are we going to do this? It is a communal habit that we find many of us after Ramadan, we, we uh, sell ourselves a little bit short. And we say, you know, I've got, I've got fasting burnout. And that burnout lasts for a good three weeks into Shawwal when we look at the calendar and we say, oh, I only have one week left. For six days. I've got one week, I've got to squeeze them all into this one week. And, we're, we're, and, and we relapse into our procrastination, we relapse into our uh, making excuses and our selling ourselves short. But this Ramadan is a special Ramadan. This Ramadan is a transformative Ramadan. There's something special about this Ramadan that no other Ramadan has really experienced, for, for, has really brought to our experience as, as Muslims, right? Uh, we have on TikTok, we have a movement, a global movement of people who are not even Muslims, who are fasting Ramadan with the Muslims this month, all over the world, and they're, and they're broadcasting it on TikTok, entering into massages and entering into the homes of Muslims to show what the beauty of Islam really is. And you cannot have that kind of support and that kind of solidarity all, all across the world and consider this Ramadan like last Ramadan. For the Prophet once said, مَنْ اسْتَوَى يَوْمَاهُ فَهُوَ مَغْبُونَ Whosoever's two days are equal has deluded himself. So what about the one whose two Ramadans are equal? The one who, this Ramadan feels like last Ramadan, and last Ramadan feels like the last ten Ramadan, and, 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 and then next Ramadan will feel like this Ramadan. This cannot be the case. And so we have to make a decision with ourselves today and a commitment to our Lord that this Ramadan is different. 
This Ramadan is un un utterly and entirely different. I am not going to relapse to my raggedy old nafs after Ramadan. Because what happened throughout the entire month of Shaban, which preceded Ramadan, we couldn't wait, we could not wait for the moon to be sighted so that we might begin our khatam of the Qur'an. We couldn't wait for the entire month of Shawwal the, 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 for the moon to be sighted to begin our khatam of the Qur'an. So when the moon was sighted on the second day in, 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 in Ramadan, right, we said, oh, I'm almost about to begin my khatam, but no, I, I have to wait to open the book of Allah. I have to wait till tomorrow. And then what happens? The night the moon is sighted, we're in the masjid and we're praying tarawih behind the imam. And we, have, and, and we get our juz in behind the imam. And then at night we go home and we get our first juz in before, the, before we even sleep, before we even start fasting the next day. And the next day, and the next day after that, we are reading juz with the imam and a juz on our own. And we may even be part of a communal juz that finishes, a communal khatam that finishes the Qur'an every day. And we are serious about our commitment with the Qur'an. And then what happens if we miss a juz for one day? What happens? We get a little anxious, a little nervous. What am I going to do? I have to make up that juz tomorrow. And it takes time to do the juz. So tomorrow I'm going to double up and I'm not going to miss another juz for the rest of Ramadan. And we might even finish our khatam on the 27th night. We've got our khatam in and there's still three days of Ramadan left. Right? And so we are in this love affair with the Qur'an. We have wedded our hearts to the Qur'an. And when you are in this honeymoon with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you present a, a, a ring, right? A ring to your beloved. And that ring in the Arabic language is called a khatam. And what do we do with the Qur'an? We do the khatam, right? It's the same exact, it's the same, it's a ring of light that we have entered into with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what happens the very day of Eid, which is today? What happens the very day of Eid? The very day of Eid? We file for divorce. We file for divorce. Right? And we don't return to the Qur'an until Surah Al-Kahf on Fridays, uh, Surah Yasin, if someone is passing, uh, has passed away, or if someone needs a, a tawfiq in one of his exams, Surah Yasin, we, uh, we have certain mulk, mulk occasionally, right? And we come back to the next Ramadan, to the next Sha'ban, to the next Sha'ban, and we can't wait to open up the book, right? But we can't open up the book in Sha'ban yet because the moon of Ramadan has not been sighted. And so this Ramadan must be different. It must be different. The message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is quoted in the Qur'an. So this is like a hadith. It's like a hadith in which Allah is the narrator. But it's a verse in the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrating this and he's the only narrator but it's still mutawatir. <laughs> it's in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quotes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as saying, complaining. وَقَالَ Rasul, And the messenger said, رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا my Lord, my people have forsaken this Qur'an. And whom was he, whom, about whom was he complaining? About Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Auf? Sayyidina Abu, uh, Abu, uh, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr? Sayyidina uh, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad? Sayyidina Bilal ibn Rabah? Sayyidina Salman al Farisi, Sayyidina Suhaib al uh, Rumi? About whom, Nusayba, Sayyidina Nusayba? Huh? Sayyidina Umm Sulaim? Was he complaining about any of them? No, he was complaining about Abu Sufyan, about Umayyad ibn Khalaf, about Abu Jahl, about Abu Lahab. That complaint was waged against them. And yet those sa that same complaint can be waged against me today. Against me, someone who has accepted the book, someone who uh, has accepted the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those words can be waged against me today. And Imam al-Ghazali says that whosoever takes 30 days to complete the khatam of the Qur'an has neglected the book of Allah. If it takes you 30 days to, to finish the Qur'an, you've neglected the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Imam al-Ghazali. And so this Ramadan has to be different. How many times have we heard it said that let us 
have five pages a day, or half a page a day, or five verses a day of the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and don't leave a single day without committing to that. How many times have we heard that on the minbar? How many times have we even taught that? And yet, we allow so many days to go by so much and the book is neglected. The book of Allah is neglected. And so this year it has to be different. It has to be different. This year we have to commit our hearts to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we have already shown that we can do so. In the month of Ramadan, we have already shown Allah, Ya Allah, we can do this. We are capable. And we are capable of doing this before Fajr even comes in. There may be some among us today who missed Fajr today. And we didn't miss a single day of Suhoor. Not a single day of Suhoor. That last, it looks like Sayyidina Yusuf looked at his 11 brothers and it blamed Shaytan. The way Yusuf blamed Shaytan, it doesn't even blame you. And it says, don't worry, those 11 months, don't worry, I've got him. I've got him. I'll take care of him. And there's no sin on you today. We walk around sinless today. And so let us not fall headlong back into the habits and the ways of the raggedy old naps and sell ourselves short and say we cannot get up in the, before Fajr anymore. We cannot fast anymore. For, for the Prophet ﷺ maintained the traces of Ramadan throughout the entire year. He would fast Mondays and Thursdays. He would fast the days following the bright nights when the moon is at its fullest. He would fast the days of uh, uh, the two days of Ashura, the ten days of Dhul Hijjah, the Prophet ﷺ would fast almost all of Shaban, if not all of Shaban. The Prophet ﷺ, if you number all of those, all of those fasts, sometimes he would come home and ask, is there anything to eat? And they would say nothing, Ya Rasulullah, so he would say, I'm fasting. And the companion said he would fast until we thought that he would never break his fast. And this is after, outside of Ramadan. If you quantify all of the fasts of the Prophet ﷺ, they outnumber the fast of Sayyidina Dawood ﷺ, who fasted every other day. They outnumber. And if you only fast Mondays and Thursdays, then you have fasted a third of the year. A third of the year plus Ramadan. That's a third of the year. And so that is something that we can do. We can do that and let us go right back into that because the Prophet وسلم, refused to bear to, to bid farewell to Ramadan. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, refused to bid farewell to Ramadan. And so he had the Hajjud every night. He had uh, uh, and he fasted just like we just like as I uh, mentioned. Right? So when did the Prophet وسلم, ever say farewell to Ramadan? When? It was a pillar of the entire religion. It's a pillar. And the Prophet Sallallahu did not separate himself from Ramadan. We, we have this one hadith that, you know, the, the companions would lament the, 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 the passing of Ramadan for six months, and then they would look forward for the next six months for the coming of Ramadan. Allahumma balikna Ramadan. Right? And so we pray, Allahumma balikna Ramadan. What does that mean? In the meantime, we have this notion that because they were lamenting, that they weren't fasting. <laughs> they were just lamenting. Oh, Ramadan, we miss Ramadan, we miss Ramadan. And they're just waiting it out. They're not waiting it out. They're fasting. They're reciting the Quran. They're praying. They're doing all of the things that they used to do in Ramadan, post-Ramadan. And that's because Ramadan is all year round. It is not the sprint. It is the marathon. The purpose of Ramadan is not confined to Ramadan. And whoever said it was the sprint... It, is, it has deceived us because it is not the sprint. It is the marathon for the rest of the 11 months. And that is the indication that our Ramadan is truly blessed, that we are able to hold on to its traces well after it has, uh, it has, uh, uh, show, uh, well after it has gone. أقول قولي هذا وصفر الله لي ولكم من سائل المسلمين فسفروا إنه هو الغفر الرحيم. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> of course, I would be remiss if I don't speak 
about what is happening in the world today, especially with respect to the Ummah of the Beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That we have in uh, the Ummah, we have uh, severe tribulation and severe trial that is uh, that has afflicted the people of Gaza, the people of uh, the West Bank, the people of Syria, the people of Sudan, the people of Myanmar, the people of Kashmir, the people of uh, uh, the, the Uyghurs in, in, in China, right, the, and, and, and many other in many other places in the world itself, the Ummah is in tribulation, and the Prophet sallallahu said, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, Ummati ummatun marhuma, ju'ila adabuha fi dunyaha. My Ummah is a forgiven Ummah. It is an Ummah that has been forgiven by Allah. Its punishment was made in this world. Its purification was made in this world. And so we have to understand what is happening. And we have to be able to perceive it for what it is. The Prophet ﷺ would often pray, Allahumma arini al-ashya'a kama hiya. O Allah, show me things as they truly are. Give me the true perception of reality as it is. And he, as, as, um, for, for his, his dua is answered, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers his dua, and we find the description of the Prophet sallallahu that in the same time that he is mutawasil al-ahzan, he is a dahak. He is of continuous grief. His grief is continuous. His grief is endless. And yet he is the one who is smiling and laughing the most among the people. And so there is a balance that he struck, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we may be asking ourselves in this moment, how is it that we can celebrate when the ummah is suffering so? And so the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ummah has always been under affliction. Even in his time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yet we have these moments in the seerah, these moments that are golden, where the Prophet وسلم, is reminded of something and they laugh about it for an entire year. And, and Aisha radiallahu says that the Prophet وسلم, he was the most justful of all people, always making a light atmosphere for his family, for his friends, always making things light in their lives, who were facing grief and the loss of life at every turn. And yet, when he wanted to, to when he wanted Anas to come forward, he would say, "Ya dal udunayn, O little boy with two ears." And he would call upon Anas in this way, and Anas would come in walking because and he would come in running because he's the little boy with two ears. Such was the humor of our Prophet Sallallahu to keep the, to keep the days and nights of the Muslims light and to keep them to keep them uh, to keep life moving, because this world was created for Ibtila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Ad-dunya darul bala. This world is the abode of tribulation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in order to try us. Al-ladhi khalaq al-mawta wal-hayata liyabluwakum ayyukumu ahsanu amala. He is the one who created death and life in order to try, with, to, to try us. Which of us is better? Which of us is more beautiful in the deeds that we commit? And so, no one is going to be asking on the Day of Judgment about the, the plight of the Palestinians when we see them entering into Jannah with no hisab. No one is going to be asking, Ya Allah, why? Why? Because the unseen is the context for everything that happens in the scene. The ghaib is the context for the shahada. Alam al ghaibi wa shahada. It is the realm of the unseen and the seen. Every single thing that happens in the seen world has its tafsir, it has its explanation, it has its wisdom in the unseen. Marcus Aurelius said that every instant of time is a pinprick into eternity. And so the Prophet ﷺ, in order to illustrate this, he said that on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the person who, out of all of the children of Adam, from Adam السلام, to the last man standing on the day of judgment, he will bring the one who has suffered the most, who has never tasted a, a moment of comfort 
or solace in the world. And he will place him in Jannah for an instant, for one instant, and remove him. And the question will be asked, have you ever suffered in your life? Have you ever witnessed a day of suffering in your life? And the man will confess, I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul, I have never tasted a day of suffering in my life. And the opposite is true. The person who had, had met the, the most, the most uh, opulent and luxurious life, comfort to, to beyond, the, beyond imagination, and had never tasted a day of struggle, never tasted a moment of grief, of grief in his entire life, will be placed in hell for one instant and will be removed from their farm and then asked, have you ever tasted comfort in your life? And he will say, I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul, I have never tasted a moment of comfort in my entire life. The unseen is a context for everything in the scene. And whatsoever is happening is happening by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that means that we do everything in our ability, everything in our control, because the ibtila is more for us than it is for them. The trial is greater for us than it is for them. For them, they have their, this is their path to Jannah. Their path is laid out before them. It is, and they're walking that path. And they're calling the world to La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah through their tenacity, and through their grit, and through their perseverance, and through their sacrifice, and through their contentment, and through their praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're calling people to this deen, left and right, for every person. Imam Zayd said, for every one who died, there's a thousand who enter into Islam all around the world. Muslims are, the number of conversions in the state of Israel is on the rise. You have the oppressed. This is ha what happened with the Mongol invasion. Who would have expected for the Mongols to settle in and then become Muslim? And then, and then uh, take this, take this deen and propel it forward. Who would have expected that from the Mongols? And that is not difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so people are coming into this religion in full, in mass. You witness that the people are entering into the religion of Allah in mass. And that is what ha what's happening before our very eyes. This is a victory. This is a victory beyond belief. It's a victory that we couldn't imagine for the past 75 years. It is a victory and it's past the point of no return. And the, the mu'min, is the archetype for the mu'min is there, the archetype for the kafir is there, the archetype for the munafiq is there. We should be, take your precious baby and cast him into the river. An enemy of his will take him, and an enemy of mine. And so she cast him into the river. What happened when that baby Led the, led, led the Bani Israel out of Egypt. What happened? That same Yam, that same river, that same river offered passage to Musa salam and to the and to his followers and swallowed whole the enemy who saved Musa years before time. That same that same river. We don't know how this thing is going to pan out, but we know that they're digging their graves as we speak. We know that whatsoever they are calling to is the snare that they are going to literally be trapped in, and they cannot get out of it. They will never be able to get out of it. So, so this, this, this is one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's one of the signs of Allah. He can use the same river, the same river, that saved Musa alayhi salam to destroy his enemy. And this is, the, this is the, the river of blood and sweat and tears right now that they, are, that they, that they, are, uh, that, that they have flowing for us. It will be the same river that drowns them. Billions of dollars of propaganda. Sin. It's spent in propaganda. Billions of dollars that are done away with. 
because one man comes out with a beard, looking like you know whom, holding his daughter in his hands, looking like you know whom, and billions of dollars go right into the drain, right into the sewage lines, right into the drain. Billions of dollars from one man who had a who had a little little phone uh, recording recording him with his daughter. And you know exactly whom I'm about whom I'm talking, and exactly whom he looks like. This is a, this is a manifest victory. This is our moment when the Prophet Sallallahu came back from Qudaybiyah and they said, Ya Rasulullah, how can you be pleased with such a low thing in deen? And this is Sayyidina Umar Abdul Anhu. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said, Inna fatahna laka fathan mubina. We have given you a manifest victory. A manifest victory. And so I won't go too much longer. But Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is perfecting his light. Sayyidina Ali Alayhi Salaam once said, no, if you were able to access and perceive the unseen, you would choose the seen as it is here and now. You would choose to change nothing of the seen. If you were able to actually perceive the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the unseen for everything that befalls in the seen. And why is that? Allah is perfecting his light, even if the faithless despise that. And that doesn't mean that we sit back and do nothing, because the worst thing that we can do is be apathetic in this moment. But whatsoever we can, can do, in terms of resources, in terms of prayer, in terms of reaching out, in terms of spreading the word, in terms of in educating people, that is within our ability. And we must be we, we must rise to that occasion. And we have the support of the entire world around us. And so in this moment, let us close with the dua of the Prophet وسلم, in which he found himself in a state of utter need with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this let, let this let this dua be on behalf of all of our brothers and sisters abroad who are suffering throughout the world. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And this is the dua of Ta'if. The dua of Ta'if. Allahumma ilayka ashku da'af wa quwwati wa qillat ahilati wa hawani ala al-nas. Ya arham al-rahimeen. Anta rabbu al-mustadafeen. Wa anta rabbi. Ila man takiluni. Ila ba'idin yatajahamuni. Am ila aduwun malaktahu amri. Innam yakun bika alayya ghadabun. Fala ubali. غير أن عافيتك هي أوسع لي أعوذ بنور وجهك الذي أشرقت له الظلمات وصلح عليه أمر الدنيا والآخرة أن يحل علي غضبك أو أن ينزل بي سخطك لك العتبة حتى ترضى ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك الله We complain to you our lack of strength our scarcity of means our significance in the eyes of others. O most compassionate of those who show compassion, you are the Lord of the meek, and you are our Lord. To whom shall you grant us over? To some distant person to look upon us with contentment, with contempt, or to some enemy to whom you shall give authority over our affairs. But so long as you are not displeased with us, it concerns us not. Though your relief is easier upon us, we seek refuge in the light of your countenance, by which every crevice of darkness is illumined, and by which every affair of this life and the hereafter is made whole, that your wrath overtake us not, nor your displeasure descend upon us. We confess to you our shortcoming until you are content. There is no strength or power except with you. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما اللهم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الابرار واجعلنا من المحسنين يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم انك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم انك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار 
اللهم اجدنا اللهم بارك لنا في شهرنا هذا وفي يومنا هذا يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم لا تحلنا معية حبيبك صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم في السكنات وفي الحركات وفي الأقوال وفي الأفعال وفي الأحوال يا أرحم الراحمين حتى نلقاه يوم العبد عليك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تحلنا من يدي الشريفة شربة هنيئة مريئة لا نجمع بعدها أبدا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما وعيدكم مبارك عيدكم مبارك عيدكم مبارك